So. Well, did you know that House Democrats sent a letter to the president urging him to oppose any benefit cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid? Jonathan Alter, who's a columnist for the Bloomberg True. View, says that that's bad news. He says Washington needs to have an adult conversation about the insanely expensive retirement of the baby boomers. He says Democrats need to get smarter on entitlements. If they don't want to talk about these programs, they can say goodbye to every other pet program. We can preserve Medicare and Amber only at the expense of investments in pre-kindergarten programs or cancer research or anything else that they have uh, outlined. By 2030, he points out, entitlement spending will make up half of the federal budget. The rest, of course, will be from defense and interest on our national Does that ring debt. true, Bob Lighton? Of course it does. Yeah. Um, and There's no entitlements in the foolishness of March 1st. Uh, well, so far, no. Uh, the real question is whether or not there's going to be th anything on entitlements on the table before March 27th. I think the most you'll get is means testing on Medicare, uh, but I don't think the Democrats means want to Means testing doesn't go far enough. Though. No, of course not. It's about 150, 100, maybe $200 billion over 10 years. Uh, but I don't see the Democrats, at least in the next four years, giving up much on the benefit side. They'll go on the provider side. They'll want to cut uh, payments to drug companies, maybe cut payments to hospitals and so forth, but I don't see them doing anything to beneficiaries. What does the American public want? The American public wants whatever they can get without paying for it. <laughs> it's a break exclusive. Um, I just, I, I'm fascinating on this, this important day. You know, we, we're trying to do this in a sane way. Yeah. Where we're going to be March 27th, where we're going to be, what's the date, May something? May 19th. May 19th. That's May 19th. the debt limit. That's the really yeah. serious one. You're the yeah. grown-up in the room. Where are we going to be? Well, I think we're going to get through these other two dates. I think we're not going to have a government shutdown, and I think we'll get past the debt ceiling because there'll be some kind of interim deal that will be reached between now and March 27th. They'll get rid of all this craziness, at least for a while, so we can go on to other business like immigration, gun control, and things like that, that maybe the American people care about more than they do this. I think they're mm -hmm. sick and tired of this cliffitis. Thank you. Well, the cliff Ida stems from Congress not doing a whole lot of anything, but central bankers are. And that brings me to my morning must read where Noriel Rubini, NYU, some call him Dr. Doom, points out the risks of these QE policies, not just in the U.S. Ten QE questions, policies becoming more unconventional, a lot less, with little clarity about short-term effects, unintended consequences, long-term impacts. QE does have important short-term benefits. Side effects could be severe. Just this debate is heating up on mm -hmm. what those side effects are, bubbles, distortions in markets. You talk about the impact on retirees and so on and right. so forth. Noriel really bringing that into Another light. Another crisis, basically. Yeah.